my friends welcome to episode zero of this special final fantasy 12 thing uh from the rpg backlog with prof and dev or with prof plays games excuse me and friends the friend here is not the dev this is travis but you've heard of him on the main feed a few times uh last time was game of the year um god 2021 maybe 2022 2022 uh. yeah um, so he's been on the main feed, Prof and Dev Play Games, um, but we are doing this special um, RPG backlog because there are so many games in our backlog that we've purchased that we have just fucking not touched. So we're deciding to go and touch these games. We're going to touch them, Travis. Well, except this wasn't in my backlog. It literally jumped into my backlog like four days ago. <laughs> I thought that you bought this game originally for PS2. Isn't that what you said? Okay. Okay. Fair. Fair. Yes. <laughs> I did originally buy it for the PS2, but n- never played it ever. Yeah, so perfect. It's it's technically in your backlog. I bought this game for PS4, uh, and then I bought it for Switch, and then I bought it for Steam, and then I remembered I had it for Switch, uh, and then I refunded it, and then I bought it for Steam again for this project. So, fuck. Uh, I owned it a few times. Uh, but Final <laughs> Fantasy, you're not you. You've played a number of Final Fantasies. What's your yes. relationship with Final Fantasy? So mine starts in what, 97, 98, eh, somewhere around there. I think it's 97, 98 because um, Anthony uh, got, had Final Fantasy VII and he had gotten probably through disc two on that one before I borrowed it from him and I took off and beat it before he ever did. I was actually at his place playing my save game on his PlayStation when I beat the game. And then from there, I was hooked. That started my love for RPGs, which nowadays, then was just RPGs, but nowadays they're called JRPGs for whatever reason. And so Final Fantasy VII, VIII, IX, X, and then XI was an MMO, so I never touched that. Twelve, I pre-ordered. We can get into the story as to why I never touched that game back at that point in day. But Final Fantasy Tactics... Um, so, in world of JRPGs, my top three all time are Tactics, Final Fantasy VII, and Xenogears. And then there's nothing that's ever going to touch those three. So oh, it's like two out of three are from this franchise. Yes. And as I explained to you before, I think the only reason why Seven beats Tactics on my list is just because of the nostalgia and being that Seven got me into it. But if I take that aspect out of it, Tactics takes the cake over Final Fantasy Seven. That's another one in my backlog. I would love to get to that one day. Um, and when you do, tell me because I will play that game again over and over and over again. Um, you know, when it, I've worn out multiple strategy guides, not because I wanted to know how to play the game, but how to get job classes in there. Yeah. Well, when uh, uh, Anthony and I got the uh, Steam Deck, the first thing he did was fucking play Tactics on it. Um, so yeah, Can't, I don't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my earliest memories of Final Fantasy are actually with you, watching you play <laughs> Final Fantasy VII. And I was telling Anthony on the Prof and Dev play, Plays Game uh, feed how fucking boring I thought the game was because <laughs> I would just watch you grind. Yeah. Um, and he was like, yeah, there are parts of that game that are just incredibly boring. And I, you know, I've, a couple of years ago when the pandemic started, I started seven with a new one where you can speed up things. And I got through Midgar into the open world to Junon and further, I think. Um, and it was okay. Like it was better playing it and seeing the whole story, but man, just watching you grind shit, was just like, fuck <laughs> this game. I, you know, I don't mind it. I, it's, as we were discussing earlier today when I was talking about why I didn't touch 12, I looked at the combat in 7, 8, 9, and 10. Each one of those things is its own individual puzzle. And so my characters were the tools for me to solve each of those puzzles. So to me, it wasn't mindless. Each one of them was figuring out the right way to do it and optimizing it to the best of my ability. So for 7 specifically, there was two islands... Um, 
in the game, later in the game, the farthest islands to the north and south that are called the islands closest to heaven and the islands closest to hell. And I can't remember, I think it was the one closest to heaven where all of the mobs there were, mul their levels were multiple of sevens. And there's a materia called lucky number seven. And so whenever you use that materia, it insta-killed any mob that had uh, its level of multiple of seven. Oh, wow, Done. that's crazy. And they were like level 70 something, and I went there like level 50, and mm -hmm. I figured that out. And then I would sit there and boom, it's like one shotting him. And so the next thing you know, I was like getting a level per battle. Oh, wow. Leveling up my characters. And then literally, this was kind of before internet was huge, big deal in finding it. But then later on, that became like if you got the actual guide, that was one of the tips in the book. The official guide was like, oh, go do this thing and use this materia. So for me, it was never. It was. It never felt tedious. I always felt like I was. I was solving something. Yeah, I feel like being the person on the sticks. Like it, you're doing something, oh. but the person watching is just like, hmm. But I was listening to, or no, I just finished uh, Final Fantasy VII remake, which is only the second Final Fantasy I've ever beaten. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But the train yard. Oh, you haven't played the remake. Shit. Um, the no, train yard. I, I know the whole story, so you can tell. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So in the original version, the train yard is like two two screens basically as, as far as i recall and you randomly will encounter elagor and elagor yeah. is where you can steal the best weapon for uh Aerith. so you know sometimes you'd be running through there and it, it would appear in five minutes other times it would take half an hour or whatever so yeah. and in, in the remake they made elagor a boss in that area and you can still steal the weapon and whatever else um but from my perspective watching someone do that i don't remember if you i watched you do that part but like watching someone do that it's like wow this is just random encounters this is boring but for the person playing like there's a fucking point to this i'm trying to get elegor to fucking spawn so i can get this yeah. weapon kind of thing but i would argue that watching just about anybody play a game gets boring after a while i god i don't think so only because of twitch look at twitch how many people are watching people play fucking games man oh, right but are they watching them play the games or are they watching the people the person themselves in the commentary going on because that's uh, yeah, the thing is yeah when, you're right you're right that's true that's true it's a lot about the entertainment section yeah or uh, of it yeah, like, let's be real. Whenever we were as a group, and like, if we were watching Anthony play something or you're watching me play something, how much, like, I wasn't talking. I was just no, playing the game. you were not talking. <laughs> <laughs> Which is part of the reporter. So you're like, okay. Hours. So, you were not talking. I'm like, I'm going to come over to Travis's house to hang out. Nope, I'm just watching him play this fucking game. And yeah, I hate it. And you know what? For a long time, I didn't play that game. Then I finally did, and I was like, eh, it's all right. I think it doesn't, I don't think that game ages very well, but Final Fantasy VII Remake is, like, one of my favorite games of all time at this point. I don't know. So this is the thing. I think uh, games from back in the 90s don't age well, not because the mechanics or the combat. I think everyone looks at the graphics and immediately gets turned off. Because if you look at the graphics from Seven, you're like, holy crap. It these is guys pretty are rough, man. That. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you also got to take into consideration that... Final Fantasy VII was three CDs. <laughs> like, literally, you had to... You'd go through a disc, and then at some point in time, you boot the game and be like, nope, you need to stop, like, open it up, take this disc out, and put in disc two. Yeah. And, yeah, so it kind of makes sense why it wouldn't age well, but I was I would argue that if they updated the graphics and just left this core mechanics in it, they still would have had a hit on their hands. Yeah, and there's, there's so much to... Like the development of seven, the whole thing with Nintendo, where they're going to do like a CD component with the 64 or whatever, and then that all fell apart, and they just made their own thing, made a PlayStation or Sony at least, and then the Square yeah. jumped it from Nintendo to Sony. It's just so much to it. It's really cool. Um, but for me, my first Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy 15. That's the first one that I really put time <laughs> into, and that's the first one that I completed, and. Everyone that I tell it to is just like, really? <laughs> that one is your first one? Um, I enjoyed it. The first part is more open world, and it's really interesting. And then the back half is just fucking corridor, railroad. We ran out of time. We need to finish this fucking game. Um, so. I, I've not played 15. And again, this goes back to what I was telling you earlier. Is I played 7, 8, 9, and 10, which were all very well you could make them not turn-based, but I'm pretty sure, no, thinking back on it, I set them specifically to be turn-based so that it wasn't a real-time battle. And then 12, this this is how this actually happened with 12. I pre-ordered it. I was pre-ordering every Final Fantasy game that came out. 
picked it up at like a midnight thing on a Thursday night, but I had to fly out the next morning to visit family back east. So I came back like four or five daters, days later, and one of my roommates, he had also picked it up, and he'd been playing it the whole dang time I'd been gone. So I come back home. He's sitting there playing it. I watch him for about 15 minutes, and I'm watching the combat. I'm sitting there going, wait a second. You're not controlling your party, really. They're doing their own thing, and you're not really changing anything that you're doing. You're basically put most of it in, and all you're doing is, for the most part, just standing around. I was like, this this is boring. This is dumb. You've taken the part of it that I love. And I never put the game into the system because of that. Mm -hmm. I, I never touched it. And then 13 came out. And it was like another version of this real-time combat. I was like, hell no, I'm not touching this. Yeah. 14 being an MMO, didn't touch it for, well, I did touch the original version of it. We're not going to talk about how bad that was. Well, before the reset, you played 1.0. Yeah, I played 1.0. Uh -huh. I, I played the before the uh, Realm Reborn came out, and that was hot garbage um, <laughs> i think that was the universal opinion yeah Even right they, which they is just, why <laughs> they retconned it and put it in the fucking game they were retconning that or they were fucking destroying this yeah and we're making like, that part of the story yeah <laughs> literally everyone logged in i logged in for that just to watch them destroy the world <laughs> um but then 15 came out and again it's another one of those real-time things and i didn't touch it and 16 was finally i don't know what it was about 16 i, I actually I know what it was 16 they had the demo out for it I'm that like, All demo right, is the best i'm gonna demo. give it a shot yeah and that, i was like holy crap this is what real-time combat is i love this this is awesome now that brings us back full circle to why i was like you're sitting there going i'm gonna play 12 i'm like okay what the hell i'm gonna give it the legitimate shot that i never gave it freaking almost 20 years ago well, I'm glad you are, because uh, you know anyone who's listened to the Prof and Dev play ga plays games main feed over the years. You know we've been doing it since 2015, and at least like five times a year, that fucker Anthony is playing through this game, or playing the game, or buying another version of the game, or just talking about how amazing the game is. So finally, I'm like, all right, I need to play a game that you that means so much to you. Let's see how it is, and I'm just like in Final Fantasy mode right now. So that's why we're here. So we are going to dig into Final Fantasy XII in the next episode. We're going to chunk it out. Uh, we've worked with Anthony and also some guides just to figure out, like, where the main chunks are. And as we played, we realized those chunks were too small, so we're taking bigger chunks. Um, so the first chunk of Final Fantasy XII that we're going to dig into starts with the Nalbina Fortress, which starts with the tutorial with Rex and stuff. And we're going to go all the way through to uh, the Gram site waterways and Rabans... Rab fucking hell. Uh, proper noun palace, Raban Nostre, Raban Nostre palace, uh, to the um, first real boss fight with Flame Main. Um, that's where we're going to go. So we're going to end here. And uh, thanks for being with us. And I hope that you enjoy this journey. We have no idea where it's going to go, but we're excited to have opinions about this game, no matter where those opinions go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, Travis, before we take off? No, I, opinions will be had, though. Yeah. That is for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the point, right? It's like, we're not playing these games to, like, you know, because we're going to love them. We have no idea. We could fucking hate them. Um, so we'll see.